For more on this agreement and its implications, we're joined now by Peter Hakim. He's president emeritus of the Inner American Dialogue. Big deal? Well, it depends. Sort of big deal? Uh, let's, let's divide it into two parts. Okay. One, it's a great message. It's a great demonstration that the Cubans have decided to really rejoin the global community. In other words, they're signing agreements with the European uh, Europeans, they've signed with the United States, they have embassies. It looks like Cuba is coming into the 21st century, and that's a great message. And it's an important one for investors and tourists and, and the like. On the other hand, if it's, and it's supposed to be to generate business, trade, aid, what have you, improve the economy, I don't think the results are much. Europe doesn't have a lot of money in aid for, the, for, for Cuba. And secondly, uh, you really have to lift the embargo and you have to get some serious economic reforms in Cuba. And those two are just not right now in the cards. Uh, Mogherina, though, did say that she felt like the embargo is obsolete. It's time for it to go. Uh, obviously, she doesn't have any sway on Congress right. any more so than the U.S. president. But, but that's a message that we seem to be hearing more now. Well, I think that if I, I ask this question of some people that know, if there was a secret ballot in the U.S. Congress, in the, you would probably get rid of the embargo. But the problem is you don't have a secret ballot. And people are running for office. They're running against other people. And right now, it does not look very promising unless Cuba begins to reform. In other words, these things have to come somewhat in pairs. The US, is, Obama, is already being accused of making a bad deal, that the Cubans aren't doing very much. The US is making all the concessions. Unless the Cubans show more of a willingness to open up. It's interesting. I saw a piece online today. The Europeans want to get to Cuba before all the American tourists get there. Uh, it was kind of a tongue-in-cheek piece, but, uh, but that is one benefit Cuba's going to see, isn't it, in terms of in, as we move towards the future, there's more tourism. Well, sure, but they also need to build the hotels. They need to repair the streets. They need to be able to put in an infrastructure for tourism. Right now, for example, they import most of the food that tourists eat. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I think uh, I'm skeptical about any short-term blossoming. I think over the long term, Cuba, I mean, its location, its closeness to the United States, all the Cuban Americans in the United States, it has enormous opportunity. But it's not going to have that if the government keeps its iron fist control over the economy and the U.S. is not quite ready yet to lift the embargo. But in terms of symbolism, uh, for, for older guys like us, right. I mean, the thought of ever seeing a U.S. president going and, and visiting, and it's remarkable, it's happening this month. Talk to me about that. Oh, that's a tremendous, I mean, I think if you go to Cuba, I was in Cuba in December for a week, and uh, there's no doubt that uh, this opening from the U.S. is so welcoming Cuba. The Cuban people were overwhelmed by it. They have great affection for uh, President Obama. It's going to be a big celebration. Obama and his advisors know it's going to be big. They want to participate in it. There's no question. It's going to dwarf the, the, the reception that Pope Francis got in Cuba. I mean, this is very big. I mean, and... You know, he's an American president that's an African-American. He's like us. This is going to be a, a great, and I think it will uh, sort of move things along more quickly on both sides. I mean, I have no doubt that the, uh, just a huge, enormous reception has to have some impact on the U.S. Congress and the Cuban leaders. I don't know who is more stubborn than the other. <laughs> That's a good question right there. Um, well, we've seen uh, the thawing of relations with the United States. We see this EU deal. Right. We know that the president of the United States is going to Cuba. You really probably can't top that, but then the Rolling Stones are going to put on a concert. Well, that, how, do they, how, do they, how do they top all of this? This is a lot in a very short period of time. Well, Cuba, you know, has got an enormous amount of attention. Let me say, I think that Cuba has had more stories since the day of December 17th uh, uh, 2014 to now than 
all the rest of Latin America together. Uh, this is a country that has, you know, it's the U.S.'s nearest neighbor except for Mexico, which is on our border. Uh, when you fly in a plane, you go up and you go down. I mean, it takes 40 minutes to get to Havana from Miami. Uh, and the amount of interchange that there is already, the cultural influence, I mean, the favorite game in Cuba is not soccer, it's baseball. Absolutely. The most known Cubans here are baseball. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there's enormous goodwill underneath all this. And goodwill is also a source of the kind of conflict that exists. I mean, in other words, we're so close that the conflict gets exaggerated. Peter Hakim, always a delight to have you on the broadcast. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank really you very it. much.